I was gonna do a whole shameless thing, do a bit where I'm watching goal reactions to uh, the uh, goals Manchester United conceded against us in the 3-0 preseason loss for them, win for us, that being Liverpool FC. But I thought, no, nah, you know what? I can't do that. Even as a joke, I, can't, I don't have it in me to do that. I'll just, I'll just find it cringe and not something that I could actually um, live with, even though it's all in, in fun and game. So I thought, you know what? Let me go through a, a couple of big Manchester United uh, fan channels and see what they say about the game and maybe just give my thoughts on that and see how we go. Maybe a, a relatively short video could be a little bit longish one, but we'll see what happens. But first of all, we'll start with, of course, the one and only Saeed, who I did cover very briefly in my immediate post-match earlier today, which you can check uh, on the um, uh, the VOD playlist, or it's in the uh, live section, so check that out. But Saeed says that we were lucky and that Manchester United played well. And off the cuff, I have to say, I, I somewhat agree. I don't think we were that great. I know I was on the halftime show on, on Hassam's This Is Football watch along, and even I said defensively we'd look a bit so-so. The midfield is giving away too many balls, and Manchester United are pressing and attacking and countering us, but ultimately we were 2-0 up at the time, so wasn't really the worst thing. I suppose you can say when you're playing bad and still winning games, isn't that what they say, a sign of champions? But definitely not in this case because it's a preseason friendly. There's nothing to really get gassed about apart from we played well, defended, we had to do what we did, and we went forward, scored some goals. Happy days. Now, let's see what Saeed had to say here. What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Saeed TV. Thanks a lot for the 98 thousand subscribers you gave big up. to me big up big up say one of you please do like the video if you can and let's get to that 100k mark and listen you've seen the title and yes i'm gonna stand on my laurels i'm gonna stand what i saw today i think liverpool got lucky today it wasn't a free no scoreline it wasn't mate all that aside, even in a preseason friendly, Manchester United got lucky in their two-all draw against us at Old Trafford in the league. They got lucky in the 3-2 win against us in the FA Cup. I mean, what else is there to say in that aspect? Pressing, shots, attacks, nothing happening. They get a lucky break, they score a goal in the FA Cup. In the Premier League, they got a lucky break from a bad pass from Kwanzaa. Fernandez chips it in past Kelleher at the time. I think it was Kelleher at the time. Makes it 1-1 one, one at the time. They go on. They score a second. We get some fortune with the penalty. Finishes 2-2. Two, two. There is luck involved in everything. So I guess you can say maybe we played better than them and then they got the luck. But in this instance here, they were better than us for the most part in that first half. But we got the luck. Or we were clinical, as they say. I think we were clinical. They had more shots overall. We had less shots, but we made our shots count. And I believe we had four big chances in that game as opposed to Manchester United's zero big chances at all. So you can have all the shots you want like us, 10 shots and have nothing to show for it, domination. But there's nothing nothing to work off there. So yes, they did play well. They played better. They did get through us a few times. Rashford had a decent game. Mount was doing okay, I suppose. Armad Diallo on the other side. Their attack wasn't that bad, all things considered. Could be better. A little bit more clinical uh, edge, and they may have been a goal or two up before we even, you know, ha had a decent chance ourselves. Man United had a game plan for once. Man United had tactics for once. Man United actually looked like they knew what they were doing for once. But okay. our defense, our defense, Ya Rabbi, if we think that we can and don't need at least minimum two more defenders. We are in trouble. I have said that. I have said that about United. I think they still need a couple of defenders. That's ultimately where they need to fix up because losing Varane, having gone, obviously Yoro is out for a, a few months now and having the likes of Lindelof, Evans, Maguire there, it doesn't make for pleasant viewing for Manchester United fans. And of course, Premier League rivals, they'll be looking at that thinking, well, that's easy. Once we get past the forward line past the midfield and we're into the back line that's fine if one basaka goes who goes to left back at this moment in time i'm not sure do they play um um what was his name amas did they play him at left back the youngster played decently well against salah but still what is he 17 years old don't don't know if he's going to be a player you want to start there dolo on that right wing uh sorry the right back position and that's where you're going to see 
some madness, I think, come uh, the season. Their right right back will be Dalos, but the left back position, that's up for up for grabs. And look, Martinez will be back, obviously, with the squad from his Argentina rest from the Copa America. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, will they will they sign Delit and another defender? We shall see. Uh, that's a little quick one there. I don't want to dwell too much in this. So that's say there. Links posted down below. So yeah, I think United did have a bit of a plan. They did play well, but just not clinical enough, in my opinion. Uh, this one here, Alice had a very level-headed uh, observation as well. Let's have a listen. Liverpool 3, Manchester United nil, and I can't lie, you guys absolutely cooked our defence. Now, I'm not super worried as a Man United fan because most of that back, back line probably won't play a lot next season. But Fair. as soon as Liverpool broke our press, they were lethal in attack. Salah looked on it. You could see, particularly in the second half, you know, slot system and the attacking fluidity that was there, the movements, the rotations. And it was an impressive display from Liverpool, who probably 3 0 was a flattering scoreline. I think as a United I found I was quite impressed with United's first half performance, despite being 2 0 down. I think. Fizz, uh, again, like Said, had a bit of a plan, which uh, Alice does say. So he, uh, again, first half, every time they went forward, I'm like, well, his opportunity and Kelleher save, or his opportunity over the crossbar, or his opportunity. You know, just shy of the post, like that Rashford turn that he had. Uh, I forget who it was against. It was like a cross come in, and then he did a bit of a turn, a bit of a shimmy. I think he'd done Bradley for it, and then just fizzed the cross goal. Things like that in the Premier League, you get one of those on target, you're doing well. But again, you're going to be playing a, against much better opposition. That defensive line is not going to be there. We're, we're going to see Trent, we're going to see Van Dijk, we're going to see you know, Kwanzaa or Kanate, who, to be fair, he did play and probably didn't have his best game under us even though it is still pre-season you still want to make sure you get your basics right and then you're probably going to see Robertson at left back once he comes back from his injury although we might start with Simica since he's uh, been playing for the last few games in pre-season and maybe he'll start ahead of Joe Gomez who is still coming back uh, from the uh, break which I think all the players are back now so yeah the back line that we played with is not going to be the back line that Manchester United will be playing against this season and of course Allison to come back in goals as well so yeah the defensive line for Manchester United is still big issues and as I said they still need some players for that and, and I think that once they get a couple of center backs that can be consistent and play and at least partner Martinez if his Yoro's out for a few months if they get a delict or, or someone else with experience at least I don't think you want to see Maguire and Martinez, since Varane is gone now, Casemiro definitely is not for the centre-back position. Shit, he might not even be for the midfield. A lot of people are saying that he's done for. So let's have let's go back to this. We made it difficult for you to play out from the back. I think the fact that you didn't have a natural six and you're sort of Jones playing there, you know, we're winning back the ball, we were, we're dispossessing with a high press. And yes, I think the that elements of what United did in the first half, I was happy with and felt that we were unlucky to be... Um, two 0 down. I think your goalkeepers were really good. Keller, particularly in the first half, but yeah. in the second half, that keeper was good. Yeah, you know, if you sell Keller, you could have a decent option out there. But I thought Liverpool in attack. I think Liverpool in general, it was a very good display for them. It was three 0 win when they're not at their best, when they've got a lot of key players missing, and they went, they beat United three 0 and they're only going to get better from that. And when I say Liverpool were like the best, I'm not saying that they're bad. But you can see they need. We to were deal. better. We could you be better. You can see there was some midfield issues there, particularly in possession, giving the ball away. 100%. I think the defensive position is going to be bad, the DM especially. I think when <laughs> if, if Slot realises, okay, yeah, I can't do this with Sober Sly, even though he did okay the other day against Arsenal, I can't do this with Gravenberg or Jones or whoever. If it's not going to be Endo, it has to be somebody else. Do we want McAllister playing as a six for the season when we know his strengths are going forward in the attacking mid? Maybe he can play on the right or the left. I don't want to see McAllister being played in a position which he is good at and he can do, but that'll stop him from doing what he can do moving forward. I think that's the ultimate thing. Obviously, depending on how he fits Slobosly into the system, how he decides to play McAllister, and the one other midfielder that's going to be partnering them is it going to be Indo or a uh, or a six, as they say, the DM. So not sure. Again, big up to Alice. Link posted in the description down below. Uh, this one here from Football Terrace. We had Terry and KJ having a bit of a discussion. KJ reckons Liverpool fans are playing the performances down or how good Liverpool are. So this isn't so much as to say, look how good we are. It's more so to say, how are United faring against a, a team like Liverpool who have established players, mind you, so do Manchester United, but 
a new manager coming in and implementing his little tweaks and adjustments as opposed to Ten Hag, who's been there now, you know, third season running, and there's still bits and pieces here and there. Obviously, Ruud van Nistelrooy coming in, changing some things tactically and whatnot. Could bode well for the future once they get some more players back, but I think Ten Hag being there is still going to be a, a, a bit of an issue for you guys. But let's see what the boys say here on that book on that game i should say yeah I mean, the games i've watched them play and the, the how they've been playing has been very very good and honest started his life at liverpool very well in my opinion he's uh um, he's clearly got his style of play across to the, the players the players are on board and the way that they move their ball is 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 dangerous when they're on it and then we were on them for the first first 15 20 minutes i was like okay cool this is good but every time That's they had fair. the ball for at least five minutes, they were, were they were threatening. Um, they keep the ball very, very well. All the players know where they need to be and they're creating chances. And yes, we created more. We had more shots, but they created chances that were more threatening, that caused more goals than, than we did today. So they are getting the ball in the right areas. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, right, actually, I know it's taken a while for them to, to be active in the transfer market. We're mm-hmm. yet to see if they're going to sign another player. But they are in a good spot. They're in a good spot. As a Liverpool fan, I don't think you should be panicking. I do think if they do sign three quality players, maybe even four quality players, then they can challenge for the league, hands down. And now, Bro, that's a big claim from KJ there. Now, I've said myself, if you've watched some other stuff, football-related, a centre-back, a DM and a winger or a forward type. Now, I know we've got Gakpo who can play on the left. I know we've got Carvalho now who wants to stay in and fight for his squad and look two goals in two preseason games, having decent performances. Nothing too flash, but decent performances for me. That's not a bad option to have in that left-wing position. Of course, Jota can slot there as well. We've seen Nunez do something there when he has been pushed out right when Jota's played down the middle. Salah obviously taking that, that right-wing position. So if you're going to be changing between Nunez and Jota in the middle, you can probably put a Gakpo or a Diaz, or a Cavalier on their left. I know a lot, a lot of people are thinking that Diaz needs to needs to move on, obviously the dribble and all that sort of aspect. Look, maybe Slot will have something in store for Diaz. Maybe we might see something different from him this coming season. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see what happens. He's having his break from the Cop America as well. And once they all come back together, which I think they'll, they're all back at the, um, the training center now, I think for the next... Uh, a couple of weeks before the season starts. There's a couple more friendlies to go. And I'm sure Slot will look at that and see who can do what. And maybe, just maybe, we might see us starting well in the first three to five games, playing well, getting some wins, thinking, okay, there's something in this year. But if we don't sign these three players or four players, uh, as it may be, then we could be looking at another situation like last season where we get a couple of injuries from uh, to key players. And once we have good squad players... They're not of that same same level. And that's not to say we have a shit squad, but when you have, for example, a Gakpo who can do a job on the left wing, let's say he's your starter, and then if he's uh, bagging a goal or an assist every you know two three games, and then you have to bring Diaz on who isn't getting that same amount of return in the same amount of games, then you're looking at a bit of a you know a lesser player, not bad, but not at the level of the player that they're playing in for, shall we say. And that's just as an example. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I don't know about this thing. I mean, I think Liverpool fans are, are downplaying and keeping calm because we don't want to be gassed away because if things don't go right, then everyone's going to come out and say, well, you guys were so fired up, happy pre-season, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not always the case. There, really, there are a few more things to this than just pre-season. It's nice to see your team play. It's nice to see a team score goals. It's nice to see a, see your team winning. But ultimately, seeing your team do good things on the pitch and seeing players have understanding and nice movements and runs and passes in between and things like that, ultimately, that's what you want to see. And again, Manchester United saw that themselves. It's just a shame they had no clinical forwards. If they did, they maybe would have won the game. If not, at least would have scored one or two goals before us, probably. Liverpool fans, they're doing this weird thing right now where if you say them, they, they can there challenge is. that that is a negative and how you're trying to bring us down by setting us up to fail. But there's really a compliment. The fact that your 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 greatest Premier League manager has left your club, to be in a position where you can say, actually, no, you can go again and potentially challenge for the league, mm. your club. So don't take it negative. And now it, people will be semantic and be like, oh, but you're saying we, we must challenge. I'm, I'm not saying you must challenge. I'm saying you could 
And as Liverpool fans, be excited that you can do that. If you don't expect that from Slot and the team, cool. But don't say, don't cower away from the fact that you could challenge because you've got a good team and your manager is is starting life well. Ah, uh, that's fair. Uh, again, don't know the whole ins and outs uh, of everything. Not at the club. Don't know what's hap- happening there. But look, it, it looks good so far. But uh, again, as as Hassan likes to point out as well, when it comes to people talking about preseason in the season when we won the league in nineteen twenty, we lost all our preseason matches and we still went on to win. So preseason ultimately could mean absolute jack shit. So it's not to say you should be gassed about it. Again, it's nice to see a team play. Even if even if we lost, even if United lost, United lost, then it's like, you know what, we saw some things that we saw some movement, we saw some passing with a different player. If we had something this there or this there, yeah, things could have been different, which is all good and well, as opposed to just same shit over and over again. But moving like going forward is one thing, but defending is completely different. And we know United's defense hasn't been the best recently because they've been shipping lots of goals and had what the most shots conceded across like the four leagues in England or something or the highest amount of shots conceded i can't remember it was some some mad stat um that was going around last season so interesting to see the sitch there uh, i think we've got time for one more uh oh good old mr mark albridge let's go for mark albridge we'll, we'll make it a nice 20 minutes maybe or just over when you watch that liverpool game it was like watching man united last season and not against good teams i mean literally against any old team you know deep defensive line the attack's trying to press, they play through the press, the midfield is just wide open and you're conceding chances. And it's just so obvious. Like, you cannot play football with the, with the players that we've got. You've got to dismantle that team and, and until we dismantle it, we will struggle. And you can't get blood out of stone and you're not going to get a good performance out of Manchester United with those set of players that we're using at the moment because we already know what to expect from Casemiro at the moment. We already know what to expect from Lindelof and wan and Scott McTominay and Christian Eriksen and even Jadon Sancho. You know what you're going to expect. And If I may play... It has, has a bit crooked. If I may play devil's advocate now, if he says you know what you're going to expect from XYZ players under this manager, but people are saying... You, we, we also have players at Liverpool who many fans don't expect to be at certain levels, but if they're going to have their levels raised by the manager, I think that's a good thing. If Ten Hag is not able to raise the level of the players he's got there, management issue. Ruud van Nistelrooy coming in. Maybe he might do something. Maybe he might change something. I, I'm not sure. I'm not a tactica, as I've said. I'm not the person you need to be going through, ironically, since I'm doing a video on my thoughts, though. But do the X's and O's sort of thing? That's not me. But I believe at least it's some sort of common knowledge that if you have a good manager and you have a set of players that can do your job, that manager should be able to get the best out of those players. And if Ten Hag can't get the best out of those players, then there's problems there, which is why people say Ten Hag is not good enough or we need to get better players in to adapt to his system, which is the whole buzzword now. Everything's about systems nowadays. Fortunately, it ain't going to be good enough. Whatever you think about those players individually, we already know the weaknesses and we already know the inconsistencies. And inconsistency is the problem at Manchester United. And consistency is the cure. But is that a fault of the manager or is that a fault of the players? Because some will say the players are decent and some will say the manager is crap. Some will say the manager is good, but the players aren't adhering to what the manager wants. So there is a bit of a, a twist in it. It's a double-edged sword. Either it's good one way or, or it's bad the other and vice versa for the opposite uh, people who think that way. So we need to bring better players in. Um, they've, they've got to get active this week. I don't know what we're doing. Wait, uh, you know, letting Delit and Agate and Masrawi wait whilst we negotiate. Don't we have the money? I don't know. But look, wan has got to go to West Ham. McTominay's got to go to Fulham. And we've got to start making changes. <sighs> Yeah, man. It's rough for United. United have to swap players. They need to take players out, bring players in. Whereas for us, we've got players there already. We need to add some more just for the cover. Like I said, we can have a situation that happened last year. We have five to eight first team players, like first first team starters out. And then we're up shit creek. Now, Slot may not be able to do what he did with the players Klopp did at the time. Maybe he can. Maybe he can see some madness in some of these other players and, and bring out another level of them or use them in a different way. But until that happens, or in, if that situation arises, we will never know. 
So that's why we need to bring in some players at the moment. In my opinion, three players, DM especially, maybe another center back because the four line, I think we might get some use out of the players we have if we use them wisely and play to their strengths in some instances. But it's all ifs, buts, and maybes until we actually see it happen on the pitch. So I'm not too sure. Anyways, you let me know your thoughts down below and um, I'll catch you on the next one.